On the pages today, we celebrate Jamaica's rich natural heritage and history. Plus, the Blue Mountain Coffee Festival trending on the gastronomy trail. Yes, you're tuned in to Jamaica's number one magazine program. Sit back, relax, and keep watching today's show for these and more to come after this message. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Home of the National Gallery West, a museum housing aspects of the Jamaican history and heritage, the Montego Bay Cultural Center offers edutainment as well as a multi-purpose town hall and tour experience for locals and visitors alike. Find out more in this next feature. The Montego Bay Cultural Center opened its doors on July 11, 2014. It has a commitment to retaining Jamaica's rich history while promoting and developing its artistic treasures. Today, it is the home of the National Gallery West, which is an extension of the National Gallery of Jamaica and the National Museum West. It also hosts a multi-purpose town hall and freedom monument. The freedom monument chronicles the names of the slaves who were harshly sentenced for their participation in the Christmas Rebellion. National hero Sam Sharp was hanged on the front cobblestone of what is now the Montego Bay Cultural Center for his leadership of this rebellion. The Montego Bay Cultural Center focuses on edutainment. The experienced staff is equipped with the knowledge and enthusiasm to ensure your experience will be memorable. One of the main goals I think all the entities and the Cultural Center itself has is the concept of edutainment. It's really not just about educating but also entertaining, making it not a place that needs to be a chore to visit for our school constituents. Through an influx of cruise ship passengers along with local visitors, the centre experiences a growing number of 800 to 1,000 visitors on a monthly basis. The National Museum West has an assortment of artefacts that speak to the history of Montego Bay and the wider Jamaica. Exhibits like From Montego Bay to the World capture the development of the city from the days of the Tainos onwards to independent Jamaica. Other exhibits spotlight important groups like the Rastafarians. When one moves to the National Gallery West, Jamaica's rich cultural heritage will continue to unfold through artistic creations. Along these walls, visitors will find works by Montego Bay-based artists Michael Lester and Marcia Bates. Views from this spectacular interactive projection exhibit by David Gums from Martinique are awe-inspiring. The Montego Bay Cultural Center is aiding the Ministry of Education in reintroducing civics in the curriculum. It has hosted a two-week summer program for students, facilitating in-depth learning of the arts and or culture. On your next visit to this dynamic facility, you are encouraged to take along any artifacts, historic information, or personal items that you may be willing to contribute to Jamaica's historic archives. The Montego Bay Cultural Center is being financed by the Tourism Enhancement Fund, but achieving sustainable funding is its ultimate goal. 
To help with that, the center operates a gift shop where you can purchase souvenirs and Montego Bay Cultural Center branded apparel. It also generates revenue through the car park, town hall, and the collection of admission fees. Admission to the center is 400 Jamaican dollars or 8 US dollars. Students and teachers enter free. It is opened Tuesdays to Sundays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So what are you waiting on? Visit the Montego Bay Cultural Center today and prepare to be educated. As we observe and celebrate our history and cultural heritage, we also like to share with you, our viewers, a glimpse of some of Jamaica's natural treasures. Across the hills and valleys and round the bend, there is a wonderful sight to behold, something to excite and satisfy your leisurely spirit. Here is some of what you'll find in the parish of Trelawney. Chelani, there's a little of this and a little of that. So all you have to do is come discover and experience. Rafting on the Matabray River is part of the offerings here in Chilani. So, when next you are in the parish, come on down. Captain JK, take it away. Yeah, man. No lele. We don't play. This is how we stay. Everything got to be okay. Hey. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Blessed. Right. Yeah, man. So, how long you have been doing this for? I've been doing this over two decades now. Oh, 20 years. So I know this stuff quite well, you know? Okay. But actually we are on the rapids now, you know? Wait, stop. We can't end this moment so soon. No, sir. Hold this frame for a little while till we go check out some other places and come back. Welcome to Farmer Tolid School, once the home of Fort Balcaris. This fort was built in 1811. It was built to protect the harbor and the town of Falmouth. Falmouth in those days was a boom town, boom, it had a lot of money, and so persons would like to come in and plunder, so this was built. Soldiers were housed in the building at the back, and they were the ones who were manning the fort. And this is where the armory was stored. Now, in later years, the fort was used no more, and so in 1902, it became the Falmouth All Aid School. Now, check out this almond tree. It is said to have been around before or from the days of Fort Belcaras, which means it is well over 200 years. This mill behind me here is a relic of the slave plantation and of the sugar production when sugar was king in the 18th century. It is part of a large estate called Holland Estate. The thing about it is this property no longer belongs to a slave holder, no longer belongs to a sugar plantation, but is actually the site of William Nib Memorial High School. 
named after the famous emancipator, William Nim. It is quite ironic that in a place where slavery thrived and our forefathers suffered, now sits an institution of learning for the descendants of those very same slaves. Ironic, isn't it? It's all about the nightlife here in Chiloni as well, where you can experience the colorful transformation of the glistening waters luminous lagoon. To capture this part of my tour, I had to start the night before. We do nightly boat rides. You can come on down and see the flashes of light once the water is being disturbed. We are the only natural night attraction in Jamaica and it is also known as the world's famous luminous lagoon. We had a magical experience tonight. It was a great time. Highly recommend it. We'll definitely be back. It's nothing like it in the world. I've never seen anything like this. So. Awesome time. Glistening waters to the world. You see why you have to come to Chilani? And if bargain is what you want, then bend down is the place to be. What one, my friend? Ben. All right, tell me, what's so popular about Bendong? Bendong, everybody can come here so come and get cheap goods, cheap clothes, everything. Oh, so how you get the name Bendong? People from all over Ireland, you know, just come here so they, they just throw down their things anywhere and sell. Oh, and people used to have to just bend down and yeah, pick up just the bend stuff down and pick up there. anything. All right, so I'm here for some bargain, so maybe I should bend down and pick up mine. Bargain for real. One hundred dollars, another hundred, another hundred, three hundred, and I'm going for more. Alright, thanks. Alright, thanks here. Yeah. I like my price chilling because the water is so cool, it's been cool and nice. I mean like the environment is so clean and the new market is so amazing. That's why I love my price chilling. Big up chilling. Here's more about this parish. It's all about peace and tranquility, ambience and relaxation, you know? Yeah, man, bless up. After a long day exploring Chulani, this is the perfect end. Just relaxing on the Mata Grey River. Until next time, when may I catch you around the bend? Later. The Ministry of Tourism staging of the 2019 Blue Mountain Coffee Festival is an important item on the tourism calendar. It's an opportunity for locals, including families and tourists, to enjoy everything coffee and more. Vibrant patrons turned out at the Newcastle venue earlier this year for a sip of the experience. Take a look. The Blue Mountain Coffee Festival is celebrating everything coffee. Not sure if it was the caffeine, but everyone seemed to have been on a high for this festival. It was pure niceness all around. 
A coffee festival. Listen. Well, today my rise like the sunrise, my bright and my upright. No one can break my vibe. I'm in a crew who want fight, who want criticize. I'm on the higher heights. Tell them, say what you want to, do what you want to. It's no concern to me. And if you feel alright in the party, well everybody just move with me. It's good, very good. Jamaican coffee culture was on display. As Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett puts it, coffee is a preferred drink and Jamaica's bean is considered the best in the world. It is part of that wider policy acting out by way of a strategy that is to bring more Jamaicans into a realization of our cultural assets and for us to consume more of our own. And then secondly, to bring the world to us to enjoy and to consume at a price all of these wonderful assets that we have. It's enabling the world to come and to not just to taste the richness and the uniqueness of the Jamaican coffee strain, but it's also to show what can be done with coffee. The numerous applications of economic value that can inure from this experience and how our artisans and our farmers and our creative people can use this um, asset to create wealth and to make a better community. So the festival, yes it is about camaraderie, it's about bringing people together, yes it's about culinary delights and imbibing, but it's also about a greater economic good which will see to the enrichment of our Jamaican people. The Jamaica Defence Force Newcastle Training Base provided the location for the foreplay with coffee. There was no conflict in sight, but rather an interest by the young and mature to indulge in the bean at the country's highest peak. With the mist hovering, patrons sampled and tested all there was to offer. The beer vanilla nutmeg, it is awesome. Well, first of all, my hand feels smooth and soft and sexy, so it's really lovely. We have a coffee cake for 300. Dozens of local brands showcased the best of coffee byproducts and how the bean may be stretched to gain needed foreign exchange. We have our coffee rum cake here, so the only case is a nice decadent cake. It's, trust me, wonderful. What we are doing today is the old school style brewing method called pour over coffee. That's um, basically we are doing everything from scratch, grind here and then brew here and then serve fresh. I have to thank the Minister of Tourism for that particular insight in understanding that for the coffee farmers to do well, we have to move from just thinking about coffee as a drink. I love it when they make it in those nice ice drinks as well. I love coffee cake. I love coffee sweetie. Lord, I do not understand. All those liquor brittles with the coffee and the peanut or the cashew. Coffee to the world. The inaugural staging of the Blue Mountain Coffee Festival has set the stage for what is expected to be an even greater event in the future. I've been waiting for something like this. We're going to market it internationally. We're going to get into the magazines and into the, um, the, 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 the digital uh, marketing uh, avenues. We're going to utilize all the media to showcase the images of Jamaica through this festival. And it is going to be a huge marketing point for us. I am having the cappuccino with spiked with a little awesome. Bailey's rum cream. Yeah. It's a good experience and it has potential for growth and it has also potential for tourism growth as well. I'm from St. Mary and it's wonderful and it's, it's very nice to see that we've got such beauty in Jamaica and most of the time we Jamaicans, we don't know about these places. I've tried the coffee liqueur and it's wonderful so I'm going to have a get a bottle to take back with me. Amazing. It's absolutely, I've never been to the Blue Mountains before or anywhere up this high and it's gorgeous. Surprised at how many people are here and how much is here on offer. It's wonderful. It's, a, it's fabulous. We've had a great time. Coffee ice cream. Great. Absolutely fantastic. It has this creamy velvety taste and it was made right in front of me, right there. My candy's delight. To try, definitely. It is a something to behold. 
real coffee is blending there. It's my first time here and absolutely loving it. I love the different products and everything. Well, next year, everybody come on out. The Jamaica Festival Song Competition serves as one of the foundation and spawning ground for our cultural music development and preservation, showcasing top performers over the years. These original songs, reflecting the spirit of the Jamaican people, provide a backdrop for the annual emancipation and independent celebrations. It was also the beginning of a new era in the festival song competition. The foundation was already laid in the 60s and 70s, producing songs that document Jamaica's culture, heritage and the spirit of the people. But with the 80s and 90s came changes, with some songs having a different sound. The sing J start around 80. It's talking over the rhythm. You, you follow what I'm saying? So it created a whole new thing where the dance different and the whole attitude different. So it was known here as melodic and as sweet. As the 60s, 70s. And there were other changes. In 1994, word came from the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, JCDC, that the then 29-year-old festival song competition would be renamed the Popular Song Competition. The aim? To represent the music of the day and to somehow cause the music to have appeal beyond the independence period. The festival song too, if you check a lot of them, had, when the festival come out, the songs they were kind of um, like a mental, more jump up feel to it. I guess because it, they wanted to be celebratory. You have a kind of, you know? So even though rocks might be on, or a slower beat might be on at the time, People still think say during festival you need something for so you find the artists who enter or, or the producer tend to inject, in my view, more of a mentor, which is our indigenous music anyway. And then again, the Kai Kai Festival song, the shelf life is very limited. A festival song seldom lives after 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 independence. It is used to, to drum up feelings and excitement up to festival after that. So seals and things. We began. The change also set out to attract younger artists who were into reggae and dancehall and persuade the more established ones to participate. There was this feeling among them that when you enter a festival, they are stigmatized as a festival singer and so they didn't see themselves entering it. And worst of all, they feared entering and one of them known the man from the rural parishes beat them. You see, they couldn't live with that, right? So I was saying now, we have a change in name from festival to popular. It would remove the stigma or lessen the, the, the dislike for it. To the younger artists, however, they saw the festival stage as an opportunity to shine. The name change did not affect the success of the competition, but in 2008, JCDC decided to go back to its original name. I didn't get the kind of um, response I thought it would have caused by changing the name and having these more reputed. Um, artists entering. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't happen. But the public didn't say, well, but years after, they, they figured it, the, the tradition should be maintained. Let's go back to the festival song contest. And though the name brand artist stayed away, three time winner of the 70s, Eric Donaldson, continued winning four more times in the 80s and 90s, the most of any festival singer to date. But I am proud to be Jamaican, and I love to be high. Another high point of the festival song competition in the 80s and 90s, it produced the first female winner. Give me 
sweet Jamaica, my little island in the sun. This period also gave rise to the popular give thanks and praise artist Roy Rayon. He took home the top prize four times. So give thanks and praises, we are still alive. It was a joyous time for Jamaicans all over. We were proud, it had meaning, it had substance. And you were very proud as a Jamaican to sing that song. The first time I entered in is 19, would have been 1980. And it's not true that every time Roy Ryan entered, he won, he won, not true. I've won some second prizes, but um, they, they, they don't count. The, 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 the top prize is what is, is, is most important. Other multiple winners included the astronauts and Stanley Beckford with three each. Contributing to the success of the 80s and 90s were the road shows. Because our songs really and truly, they, they, got, they got exposure, great exposure. They were going island wide doing 14 shows. The songs were, you, you one song, each song was playing like three, four times, five, could, up to six times per day. That's the sort of rotation for up to six weeks, so um, you know, so, so you monitor that. You don't care if you didn't like a song. Everybody knew it. every song. Over the years, the JCDC has ensured that the festival song competition continues to produce memorable celebratory songs, creating a kind of hypnotism that draws people to the finals year after year to support their favorites. To have kept it going for from 63 or 66 till now, first of all, is a major, major achievement. And I think it's a flagship item on the JCDC's um, showcase of our um, culture each year. On the board this week, the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, JCD's staging of Mellow Go Round is now on show at the National Arena today, August 3 at 8 p.m. This is the premier family festival event featuring the best of the best in dance, drama, music, speech and traditional folk forms. The National Arena also comes alive on Sunday, August 4, with the staging of the JCDC's Jamaica Gospel Song Competition Grand Finals. Starting time is 7 p.m. Nightly shows will be live streamed on the JCDC website, jcdc.gov.jm. The Jamaica 57 Independence Grand Gala will be held on Independence Day, Tuesday, August 6, at the National Stadium. It begins at 6 p.m. For more information on the independence celebrations, persons may contact the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission's head office. They are located at 35 Phoenix Avenue in Kingston, or you can reach them by phone at 876-926-5726-9. And that's all for our community notices this Saturday. If you have something to share on our notice board, give us a call at 876-922-8680 or email cbishop at jis.gov.jm. We've come to the close of Jamaica Magazine for today. We hope you've been enlightened and ask that you join us again tomorrow for more. Until then, continue to watch these and other programs by logging on to our website, gis.gov.jm, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. You may also find us on all major social media platforms. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson reminding you that Mellow Go Round will be on show tonight at the National Arena at 8. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.